in your kit this month. There are 12 white strips and 12 colored strips. We're going to trim all the strips down to two and three fourths inches. I have already spray starched all mine. Um, rather than cutting my strips two and three fourths inches first, I'm going to cut a piece off the end. Um, you can cut them all to two and three fourths inches wide first if you want to, but I'm going to do something a little bit different than what's in the directions. So I need to cut off a piece so I can get two two and three quarter inch squares out of here. Two and three quarters times two is five and a half. I'm cutting it just a little bit bigger because I haven't squared anything off yet. So now I can cut them to two and three fourths inches wide. I'm going to straighten one more edge and then cut it two times two and three fourths is five and a half. And so I'm lining my two and three fourths inch line up here and my five and a half inch line here. Um, you can cut them all to two and three fourths inches wide first if you want to but I'm going to do something a little bit different than what's in the directions. So I need to cut off a piece so I can get two two and three quarter inch squares out of here. Two and three quarters times two is five and a half. I'm cutting it just a little bit bigger because I haven't squared anything off yet. So now I can cut them to two and three fourths inches wide. I'm going to straighten one more edge and then cut it two times two and three fourths is five and a half. And so I'm lining my two and three fourths inch line up here and my five and a half inch line here. Cut, and cut. And then I'm going to back it up to two and three fourths inches. Okay, this is the part that's a little different than the directions. I am pairing up at this point, whichever white pieces and colored pieces I want together. I'm putting them right sides together. And now I'm going to trim them to a two and three quarter inch strip. I am not worried about this end at this point in time. You do not need to straighten it. It's just the long, long sides. So make sure you have at least two and three quarters after you do your first cut to straighten the strip of fabric. And you can either rotate your mat or the strip of fabric. Now if you want these to stay together really well, you can press the two strips of fabric together. And for some reason, when you iron or press, it gets a little bit of static that holds the strips together. I didn't on this one. So two and three fourths, I'm gonna double check that. So there's my, my strips. I'm going to work with them in pairs because that saves me a step later. For this block, you are going to need a 15 degree wedge ruler. And I tried playing with other rulers and they didn't go small enough down on this end. So unless you want to draft a paper piecing pattern, which I'm not going to do, you will need this ruler. So we're going to take the ruler and line the half inch mark, which is the second mark up on the ruler, with one edge of our strip. And the other edge is lined up with the three and a quarter mark up here. And then we're going to cut. Your first cut is the most awkward because you're going to have to cut two sides. And if you'll just keep these pairs together, they are ready to sew because they're right sides together. And then just work your way down the strip. I'm running into my tripod. Alternating the ruler. So now my half inch mark is going on the top of the strip and my three and a quarter is on the bottom and my cut edge should be lining up with this side of the ruler. So we're going to work our way down and you need 12 wedges out of each strip of fabric. So there are a lot of pieces in this block this month. So don't wait 
till the last minute to do it. And I'm going to finish cutting those off camera. Because I sewed, uh, cut my wedges in pairs, they are already grouped together, right sides together. We are going to sew them together, a white one with a colored one. And you want the white one to be on top and we're going to start at the widest edge when we're sewing them into pairs of two. You will want to make sure you have a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I don't use pens, but if you feel more comfortable do, using them, then go ahead. Um, I hold on to make sure I get my quarter inch all the way to the end. A common mistake people make is they let go at the end of their piece and they veer off and don't get their accurate quarter of an inch. I am chain piecing. And on, my, on this machine, I can put a guide on. I don't really have to have it. I can use my quarter of an inch, but with that guide there, it just means that I can sew faster without losing that quarter of an inch if I'm not paying enough attention. So it's just all 144 pairs. We're sewing, again, we're sewing with the white on top because that means it's going to be on the right if I open it up, so like the pattern says. And we are sewing on this set from the widest part down to the narrowest part. And you may or may not notice, um, when I'm sewing, I'm not tugging it through. So I'm not even with these little pieces holding onto it at the back. I'm letting the machine do the work and just guiding it with my fingers. And so just keep going. Our next step is to press our seam allowance toward the white on all of our pieces. So I pressed it in place as sewn. And remember, these edges are at least a slight bias so you're not going to want to scoot back and forth. I'm just pressing it down. Actually, you might be able to even just finger press this, but I'm pressing all these. If I had you stay and watch, it's going to be kind of like watching grass grow. So just press them all. After pressing, we have 12 groups of 12 wedges each. We're going to take each of those groups and divide them into four stacks of three each. And then we're going to take, we're going to sew those three together into a quarter of a circle. And I will take you to the sewing machine to show you that process. Okay, from here on out, we are going to be sewing from the small end of our unit up to the wider end is exactly opposite what we've been doing. And there is a reason for that. If you sew like strips or pieces in opposite directions, like up one and down the up one side and then down the other side, then it will keep the pieces straighter. So that means that my white is ending up on top again. And remember, we're sewing these into, we're sewing three units together, but I still like to chain piece. So I'm going through and sewing two. And then I'll come back and add the third. So I'm just going to reach back and grab the first one I did, clip it off my chain, open it up. We are still going to be pressing our seams toward the white. So I'm just going to finger press it and add on my next piece. And if you want to sew from the, remember we're still doing the small side first. So. If you would rather go press it in between, you certainly can. So again, I'm just grabbing my back one, opening it up, 
finger pressing toward the white. Putting my next one on. And I will just keep repeating this process until I have all my groups sewn together into four pieces with um, really six wedges a piece or three colored ones and three white ones. Okay, we are still pressing all of our seams toward the white. And I found that for me, it is easier to finger press first, kind of get it how I want it laying down with these little pieces and then come back with the iron and put the nice crisp press in it. And I still have slight bias edges out on the, e on the ends, so you're not going to want to be scooting back and forth and stretching it out of shape. So you're just going to press all 48 sections that you have and then we'll go back to the sewing machine. Now we're going to sew each of the quarter sections together in each colored block to make a half circle. Again, we are going to be stitching from the small end to the wider end. And the next one. And I think I've mentioned before that I chain piece anytime I possibly can. So there's one. And then another. Now once I have two sets through, I can go ahead and cut off my first pair. And when I'm off camera, I'll probably just go through and do them all. And now I'm going to sew the two halves together. Again, I'm working from, I'm stitching from the narrow to the wide. So I'm going to do one side and then I'll come back and do the other. And I don't like cutting my thread anytime I don't have to. I'll grab the next one, open it up, this. And then my last seam on this one is joining it to make a full circle. We're going to just stitch through all 12 sets that way. I have finger pressed again towards the white and now I need to do my final pressing. It should lay pretty flat you are going to want to pay attention to your quarter inch seam allowance. Um, if you're not sure that you're getting an accurate quarter inch seam allowance, then go back to last year's video on getting an accurate quarter inch. I will put a link to it. So you're going to have 12 of these circles. Just set them aside. That's as far as we're going this month. Because this is a first month, you've had a ruler that you really did need to buy to be able to do the block. I wanted to show you some other things you can do with the ruler. If you have no interest in it, stop the video. This has absolutely nothing to do with the homework. Um, this ruler is a 15 degree wedge 
And what that means is if you take a circle, which is 360 degrees, um, you're going you're going to take 15 degree sections out of it. So a 360 degree circle to get a full circle, you need 24 wedges. Wedge rulers come in different degrees. There are 10 degree ones, there are 18 degree ones. So if you had a 10 degree ruler, you'd have to have 360 wedges, not 360, you'd have to have 36 wedges to get a circle. If you had an 18 degree, you would need 20 to get a circle. Anyway, this table runner was made with a 15 degree wedge ruler and you could certainly do something very similar to this with the ruler that you're getting this time. The table runner is made up of half circles which have 12 wedges in them and then the quarter circles that have six wedges in them. I'm going to show you how to get these points. It's again nothing to do with this month's homework. Okay there was extra on the strips that we cut this month, so I just kept cutting wedges so I can play. If you want the point, like I showed you on that table runner, you're going to take your wedge and fold it in half, right sides together, and on the top, the widest edge, we are going to sew a quarter inch seam, and this is going to be a really tiny one, but right across that top edge. So now I have a piece that looks like this and I'm going to turn it right side out and it will work easier if you can open that seam up. And if you have a point turner that will help too. And it also wouldn't hurt to cut a wedge across that tip. We're going to turn it right side out and then you'll want to take it to the pr a pressing surface and press it with that seam centered down the middle of this. I'm just going to finger press it for this time for the, my purposes and so then I get pieces that look like that. Once I have all I want then I can go ahead and just sew them together with my quarter inch seam. I would make sure that my top edge matches when I was putting them together. Just for kicks I went ahead and did 24 of these with the points using my leftover fabric. So now when I go to sew them I'm going to put them right sides together and I'm going to line up my um, folded edge here. I'm going to sew all these the same direction because I'm more, I mean I'll always be starting from the top because I'm more interested in this matching than anything else. So let me sew them and I'll show you how it looks. I've spent my whole day fiddling around with this stuff so the colors aren't too good now but here's my finished uh, Dresden plate the one that I sewed all the corners it's actually I wanted you to see how small this one is it's about six inches across on this one I chose to press all my seams open um, I think it came out really cute and I think what I'm going to do with it is save it and use it for the label on the back of the quilt so there's a couple extra things you can do with your um, wedge ruler I hope you experiment with it when you have some scraps. It, you can have a lot of fun with it. This is another block that I have done with a 15 degree wedge ruler and this one was actually done with the stack and whack method where you stack up in this case it would be six layers of fabric where you're matching the repeats and then I actually this is the wrong side of the fabric that's the right side wrong side right side so that I'm getting this effect. Unless you look close, you can't tell that it's right and wrong sides, but that has nothing to do with the wedges. But you can get fan units. Um, I didn't do the points on this one, and rather than having to do a curved seam or turn under my raw edges, I made bias strips with a bias tape maker, and I sewed with the sewing machine on this edge, flipped it over, and you could sew with a sewing machine on this edge to sew it onto your background. I actually hand stitched it down, but that is certainly up to you. I mean, if you're making a fan, you could use a decorative stitch off your sewing machine. In addition to the two that I've shown you here, 
There is a quilt top in the store hanging on the west wall right now that I made. Um, it's called All Geared Up and the circles in that were also done with a 15 degree wedge. So take a look at it if you're in the store.